Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for our discussion today on supplements, my favorite supplements for taming inflammation. I'm very excited to share with you some of my greatest tools, some of the tools that have stood the test of time with myself, have stood the test of time with using it with my clients over 15 years, and have definitely stood the test of time for, well, some of these things for hundreds and hundreds of years as herbs, as nutrients, as things that we've had available to us over time to manage inflammation. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, well, I'm going to share a little bit about what inflammation is, why we need to be educated on inflammation, and what we can do about inflammation, because there's so many amazing tools out there. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. We're going to um, have some time to talk about these amazing tools, and then we'll open the floor to some questions. But before I get started on the tools, I want to first introduce this idea of inflammation. Actually, first, I want to introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me or have been joining me for the first time, I'm Josh Gitalis. I'm a clinical nutritionist and functional medicine practitioner. I split my time between my practice. I practice out of Toronto, uh, Ontario, Canada, and I split my time between my functional nutrition certification program, teaching how to use these amazing tools in practice. Because uh, it's one thing to kind of know what's in the books. It's another thing to know what to actually do with all these amazing things. Has anyone ever heard someone say, yeah, I've taken supplements and they don't really work? Well, oftentimes people are not using them in the right way. You could have the greatest tool. You could have a hammer, which is great for hammering nails, but not really for screwing screws. Right? We have to know how to use it. Okay. Let's dive into inflammation. What is inflammation? Our immune system is responsible mostly for the inflammatory process. It's the guards of our body. You can think about the law enforcement agents in any country. You've got the border police. You've got the highway patrol. You've got the ticketing agents. You've got uh, the people that work in the office, the people that that are in the neighborhoods. That's our immune system. And there's many players in our immune system, different types of players. And there's many different types of players that are in different parts of the body as well. But with the immune system, there's a constant vigilance, just like law enforcement. We always want law enforcement to be there to make sure that they're on call if someone is breaking into a car or robbing a bank or doing something that is illegal, that is not part of the rules of law, right? So we have certain rules of law in our body. And when those are compromised, this stimulates an immune response and they have at their disposal amazing ammunition to be able to deal with that. They got bazookas and bullets and bombs and all sorts of things to be able to deal with whatever that insult is. Now, in a healthy body and a healthy person, they want kind of like a baseline level of vigilance. The way I would think about it is we can think about it based on the analogy I already gave with law enforcement. They're always there, they're always at the ready. Or we can think about it as a furnace, as a pilot light that is always on and ready to spark up the heat when the heat needs to be turned up. If that pilot light goes out, we're in big trouble, right? You gotta relight it. But we always want that pilot light to just kind of be lit and always burning a little bit until we ramp up and want the heat to increase. That's kind of where we want our inflammatory process to be on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what we're going to refer to as an optimal inflammatory set point. Now, when there are more stimulants on the immune system, that can be from many different things. 
It can be from bacteria, viruses, mold, toxins, UV radiation, stress, food. When there's an extra load on the immune system that tells it to turn up the heat, we start to release these inflammatory chemicals and we begin to elevate and increase that inflammatory set point. When we elevate that inflammatory set point at baseline, when a larger insult comes, we have to have an added response to the already elevated set point. See, if you're down here and you have a healthy inflammatory set point, like that pilot light's always on, it gets cold, you ramp up the furnace, it turns up the heat and it gets to the temperature you want it to be at. But if the temperature is always hot and then you turn up the heat on top of that, you get an additive level of inflammation and that can create a big problem. We know this quite clearly with what has happened with uh, coronavirus and, and not just coronavirus, but lots of viruses and even bacteria is when you have an elevated set point of inflammation, and then all of a sudden this foreign uh, invader comes in, in this case, a virus, your immune system has to fight it. It has to amount a response to it. And it's doing it at a much higher level and an additive level where we have what's called a cytokine storm. I'm sure some of you have heard that term, cytokine storm. How many of you have heard that? Put a yes in the chat box if you have. So the cytokine storm is not um, something that's only happening in these specific types of people, right? That are having complications and issues with inflammation. Um, those chemicals that are being released are being released in, in other people too, but their set point is lower, so it doesn't put them over the edge, just as an example. Another example, which is very, very common in the world today with degenerative disease, with degenerative disease, we're living a certain lifestyle, we're eating certain foods that increase the inflammatory set point. There was a study done that looked at the inflammatory chemicals released after eating a meal, like a McDonald's meal, right? Fast food, you know, Big Mac cheese, fries, Coca-Cola, and those inflammatory chemicals get elevated for the next five hours. And it happens immediately after you eat that meal. So if you think about what people are eating and doing on a regular basis, their inflammatory set point is elevated all the time. What happens if another insult comes? It might not just be a virus. It might be an injury they get injured working out, or they get in a car accident. Well, their inflammatory set point was already elevated. So now they have an additive effect on that. Recovery is going to be a lot more difficult. The injury is going to be a lot more severe. And to go through that inflammatory process, it's going to be a lot more uh, complex and complicated for that individual. So we want to make sure that we're in a lower inflammatory set point. I mean, the name of the game with what I do and what I've been doing now for 15 years, maybe even more working in the health industry, is this word that's not so sexy that is used a lot called prevention. Has anyone heard the word prevention? <laughs> Prevention, uh, it's not as fun as treatment, right? You know, when you have treatment, you like give someone something and it does something right away. And wow, that's amazing. But with prevention, it's a lifestyle. It's a constant flow, right? It's, um, it's a vigilance of keeping your resilience up. You know, I'm a nutritionist, as you know, and the word diet comes up a lot. Diet comes from the Latin word diete, which is a way of life. Actually, food has a very small amount to do with it. So the inflammatory process in the body is, um, is, is controlled all the time. And we want that set point to be large. So, you know, I, one example is I had a, a friend uh, call me and, and ask me about her father. Her father was experiencing 
incredible joint pain for many, many years, very inflamed, was on many anti-inflammatories. And when we discussed the diet and the way of life, it was a highly inflammatory lifestyle. So this resulted in a lot of pain and a lot of inflammation, right? Um, Anytime something happened, it was a crisis because it was the set point was so high that there was this inflammation on top of that. All right. So how do we um, actually deal with inflammation? How do we do some things for prevention? How do we do some things when we get inflamed? Because I think inevitably, if we're all humans living on this planet, we get injured, we get inflamed at some point, we bump a leg, we injure ourselves in the gym. I did that recently. And that's kind of why this came to my mind, wanting to share all my tools that I use. Um, you're in a car accident, you have a sports injury. You know, if anyone's into movement or exercise or sports, it's inevitable one day you get an injury, whether it's minor or major. Uh, so it's amazing to have these tools at your disposal and to know what to do with them. Without further ado, let's get into those tools. So the first one here, some of these might be obvious. You might have heard of them. Um, and there's also a lot more out there. But these are some of the ones that I use on a regular basis, both with myself and with clients. And I find have stood the test of time. They also have the science to back them up. And um, they're just tremendous tools to have in the toolbox. So the first one, uh, in terms of uh, supplements, is a good fish oil. Now, you're going to see the brands that I choose as well, which is great. This is one by Genestra. I don't have any affiliations with any of these brands. This is by Genestra. It's Super EFA Fort. I really like this particular product. It's in a triglyceride format. This is something also... Uh, getting into the nitty gritty of supplements and why they're good and why they're bad and how to choose the, the right ones is something I dive into in great detail in my therapeutic nutrition and supplements and practice course, which is also part of my functional nutrition certification program. That's a mouthful. I've said it many times. I'm getting good at it. That begins in September. But if you really want to dive into supplements, that's the course to uh, join me for. But the first one here is Super EFA Liquid 4. Uh, it's really high potency EPA and DHA. And every single cell in our body has a phospholipid bilayer. What does that mean? Phospho, phosphate, lipid, fat, bilayer, two layers. Every single cell has a wall around it, we could say, that's made up of fat. Yes, made up of fat. And those fats have an important role to play. When we get inflammation or need to start an inflammatory process, we break off those fats and then we put those fats through a cascading process of making them into pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory chemicals in our body. So this is the raw material for some of those anti-inflammatory chemicals, not the pro-inflammatory chemicals. And whatever fats we consume, those are the fats that we incorporate into our cellular membranes. If I'm eating fries and burgers and chips and heated fats and destroyed fats all the time, guess what types of fats incorporate themselves into my membranes? All of those pro-inflammatory fatty acids that are just ready to create inflammation at a much higher level. That, from a biochemical perspective, is what increases the inflammatory set point. It's like a gun ready and loaded with these bullets that are just going to ricochet everywhere and cause a massive explosion, right? The fats in fish oil and of course fish, well, today we're talking about supplements because it's a little bit more fun sometimes, um, but obviously fish uh, like sardines, salmon, mackerel have hot, really high levels of the omega-3s. Um, but fish oil is going to concentrate that. And it's also going to give you the ability to consume it on a regular basis without having fish every single day. And um, fish can also be high in heavy metals, which is a different discussion. But um, the liquid Super EFA uh, Fort, one of my favorites, helps to decrease that inflammatory set point for the whole body. Also has a, lots of 
other amazing benefits like the DHA, which is great for the brain. But we're not talking about mental health today. If you want to talk about mental health neurology, join me for the functional nutrition certification course where we do a whole course on that. Fish oil is part of that. So first one is fish oil. Now, what happens with fish oil is the EPA in the fish oil gets converted into these anti-inflammatory chemicals. We're just gonna put a pin in that for a moment and talk about the inflammatory process. The inflammatory process, you can kind of think of it of having three stages. The first stage is the initial inflammatory insult, okay? So say I bang my hand, gets inflamed, gets red, gets painful, gets hot. The immune system gets fired up. And then we have the immune response starting to try to clean up shop, deal with any broken tissue, um, start to try to bring the inflammation down after the inflammation has started and go. And then third phase, go into a resolution phase. Resolution phase is crit critical. That's what completes the sentence, the inflammatory sentence. That's what completes the inflammatory process and allows us to go back to normal, right? I've injured myself many times, maybe more than I would like. Just recently injured myself again, but I'm back to normal. And that's because the body has this ability to go through that inflammatory process and go back to baseline. So those chemicals in the fish oil eventually get converted into what are called specialized pro-resolving mediators. And with nutraceutical technology, this is more of a recent supplement that's become available. You can actually get those chemicals. This is from Metagenics. A couple companies make it now. Specialized pro-resolving mediators, which help with the resolution phase of the inflammatory process. These are a lot more potent in terms of their anti-inflammatory effect. They're a lot more expensive as well, but they're a lot more powerful for getting that acute inflammation under control, okay? Because it's one more step closer to those chemicals that are gonna help decrease inflammation. So those are called specialized pro-resolving mediators. And you can actually use those in conjunction with the fish oil, but sometimes you need to start with these and then you can move to the fish oil to keep that baseline going. Okay, moving right along. Oftentimes with sports injuries or physical injuries, mechanical injuries, um, there's a damage to the tissue. I mean, there's always really a damage to the tissue. Um, and one of the ways that that tissue heals and gets back up and running is there's um, certain proteins that are created to patch up the tissue and to remodel the tissue, help prevent scarring. Uh, and debris can kind of build up in the wound. Now, one of this is something I've used for many, many years. It's called Wobenzyme N. Wobenzyme N. Wobenzyme has been around for a long time. There's an abundance of published studies on Wobenzyme. And what is Wobenzyme other than a funny word? Well, I think I actually don't know exactly why they chose that name, but it's an enzymes. It's enzymes. And it starts with woe. Maybe that refers to wound and bone healing or something enzyme. I don't know exactly how the name came about, but, but what this is, is this is a combination formula of what are called proteolytic enzymes. Proteolytic are protein digesting enzymes. So it's got bromelain, papain, trypsin, chemotrypsin, pancreatic enzymes in there. It even has some rutin, which I'll talk about in a moment. But Wobenzyme helps to clear out debris, helps to bring down inflammation, helps to uh, repair tissue in the body because it helps to break down those proteins that are, were initially there to patch up the wound, right? So if I cut myself or if, if there's a leak in the boat, right? Oh no, there's a leak in the boat. Put anything you can to cover that leak to make sure that that boat doesn't sink. Anything that you can find. Okay. 
When we get back to the station, we're gonna patch it up with some proper fiberglass and make sure it's nice and strong. So your body, again, patches up things really quick, really fast. You wanna stop bleeding. You wanna stop the injury from getting worse. But then there has to be the repair process and the resolution of the inflammatory process. And Wobenzyme helps to clear out some of that debris that did the initial healing. Wobenzyme can be taken acutely can be taken chronically as well. So if it can be taken for acute inflammation, oh, I just injured myself, start taking Wobenzyme. It can be taken for acute, or sorry, chronic inflammation, like arthritis, um, you know, uh, pain like that. Um, and it can also be taken as prevention. There's some really cool studies that show when athletes take this before an event and if they get injured, the injury heals way quicker and it's not as severe. And actually, uh, the last ski trip I went on, I took Wobenzyme, uh, took it every day. On the uh, second last day, I fell on the last run uh, on a big piece of ice, twisted my wrist a little bit. And it was so bad, my wrist, that I didn't think I was gonna be able to ski the next day. But as the evening went on and into the morning, pain completely went away. Now that's an N of one. It's anecdotal. I can't tell you whether that's going to happen for everyone, but I was taking Wobenzyme and it was quick healing. It was something I had never experienced before. I was actually worried I'd have to sit out the rest of the ski trip, which would have made me very sad, but I didn't. And it was a wonderful time. Okay. Wobenzyme M, another really great one to have in your inflammatory toolkit. All right. So moving into now, uh, some of the botanicals. So we've, we've, we've discussed fatty acids and how that works with the body to decrease the inflammatory set point. We've talked about some of the later molecules, like the, uh, specialized pro resolving mediators. We've talked about some acute care, some of the proteolytic enzymes, and now moving into the botanical world. I mean, the botanical world is, is, is incredible. Um, there are so many wonderful inflammatory compound, anti-inflammatory compounds in the botanical world. And I'm going to share with you a couple of my favorites, but before I do that, I want to just share with you on um, the slide here. All right, there we go. So here, what you see. Now, I'm not going to go into the biochemistry too much because it can get a little bit complex. This is something we dive into a little bit more in my program. But what we see here as a, as a, as a step one is pharmaceutical modulation of the inflammatory process. So with inflammation, from a pharmaceutical perspective, a conventional medicine perspective, all they're trying to do is really cut off the inflammatory compounds. It's like... Um, you know, oh, my computer screen's on. It's too bright. Oh, I'm just going to cut the wire, right? That's how pharmaceutical modulation of, of inflammation works. They're just trying to cut things off end stream. And unfortunately, that doesn't work in the long term. And there's lots of side effects associated with that. So it can work in the short term. And there's a time and a place for anesthetic. There's a time and a place for non-steroid anti-inflammatory medications. Um, and you know what, when you're in serious pain, none of these nutraceuticals work like drugs. And sometimes you need drugs. If I'm in a car accident or going into surgery or something, I'm going to need drugs to do the trick. What we're talking about here with the nutraceuticals is it helps coax and move the body into more of an anti-inflammatory state, but really sometimes we need painkillers. Some of the problems arise more from a functional nutrition perspective when people are using these anti-inflammatories chronically. That's where there's something that we need to dig deeper into because chronic inflammation is governed by dietary and lifestyle choices for the most part and some environmental inputs. So you can see here like uh, cortisone, for example, which is a very, very strong anti-inflammatory. Um, the, the drug version is prednisone, inhibits something called phospholipase A2. And you can see you see at the top there, it starts with cell membrane. Now you, now you know that our inflammatory chemicals, pro and anti-inflammatory come from our cell membrane. Remember, we discussed that just a moment ago. Now you know that you're like biochemical experts and we break them off 
right? It's like the, the immune system comes and says, oh, we need some supplies. We need some two by fours and, and uh, bricks and stuff. We're going to break those off from the cell membrane. We're going to use those to deal with the inflammatory process. We can see there's a cascade down into these other inflammatory chemicals. And oftentimes these other inflammatory chemicals are associated with pain, right? That's why we want to use these drugs to stop them from being produced. So we've got, you know, prednisone there. We've got aspirin and ibuprofen inhibiting cyclooxygenase, also known as the short form as COX. Um, lots of uh, issues with some of those inflammatories of that nature over the years because they came up with COX-2 inhibitors a long time ago. Well, I don't know, like 20 years ago now. And it was, they were like these wonder drugs because they, they inhibited COX-2, which was associated with pain and inflammation, but they didn't, uh, they, they didn't affect COX-1. And um, the, the problem with the other anti-inflammatories was that they affected COX-1 and COX-2 and caused gastric bleeding cause the stomach to bleed, right? People get ulcers if they're taking anti-inflammatories a lot. The problem with COX-2 inhibitors is they affected the heart in a substantial way. And there was like between 80,000 and 120,000 cardiac events. Thousands of people died because of the use of these drugs. And now they have a black box warning and were taken off the market for the most part. But um, see, whenever you try to trick nature, there's a side effect and there's a consequence. So this is the way the pharmaceutical industry tries to deal with pain, time and a place, but not really a great approach for um, long-term chronic inflammation. Now, the cool thing about nature, and most pharmaceuticals are actually derived from nature, from, from botanical sources, is that we have lots of tools at our disposal that actually do similar things or better things than some of the medications out there. Look at all of the ways that these herbs do similar things than the medications. Look, quercetin and licorice root affects similar pathways to cortisone and prednisone. prednisone. Quercetin, ginger, turmeric, bromelain, and white willow bark. By the way, aspirin is derived from white willow. White willow is the whole plant. Also has similar inhibitory pathways. The herbs though, just aren't as strong. They're not as aggressive and they work on many pathways rather than just one. So they don't have side effects like medications do. And look, even in the bottom right corner, we have onions, a food, a functional food, garlic that can be used for anti-inflammatory situations. So it's just incredible what's available to us in the botanical world. So my next supplement here that I wanna share with you is is called Inflavonoid Intensive Care by Metagenics. And I love it because it's a wonderful combination of some of these herbs. It's got hops in there, not on this chart, but a great anti-inflammatory. It's got curcuminoids, which comes from turmeric, of course. Turmeric, we can see, is on multiple parts of this chart. Um, it affects uh, at least 50 different pathways, the curcuminoids and turmeric, one of the greatest anti-inflammatories on the planet. Boswellia, also known as frankincense, really great anti-inflammatory and ginger, ginger. So as you can see here, um, there's so many great botanicals at our disposal. And there's a cool thing that happens with, with, when you use herbs and when you use them in combination, you get what's called a synergistic effect. So just like when you make food and you're putting all these ingredients together and you get a wonderful food out of it, maybe you're baking something, maybe you're making a delicious salad, with botanicals, the same thing happens. The, um, the combination of herbs are actually greater than the sum of its parts. So I really love combinations. And that's why I love in flavonoid intensive care, um, using that uh, because you get a really nice variety of herbs. You get them in a good dosage and you get them in a really good form. Something that I talk about more in my functional nutrition certification program, but love that one. Now, another one I just pulled out of the cupboard because we had it is just straight up ginger. Ginger, I love it because it's inexpensive. As you saw, it has anti-inflammatory effects in the body. It can be taken capsule form. It can be taken tincture form. 
Shout out to St. Francis Herb Farm, who makes an incredible tincture of ginger. It's super powerful. It's not for the faint of heart. Anyone ever tried this ginger tincture? It's like serious business, serious business. Um, we're dealing with um, a pretty high potency here, a one-to-one -one potency. So one milliliter is equivalent to a thousand milligrams of crude herb, potent stuff. So ginger is something we always have. It's also great for nausea. It's great. It's a digestive mimetic, helps move things through the digest tract, helps speed up digestion, um, uh, helps to increase circulation. The, the, the amazing thing about botanicals is that they're not just one trick ponies, right? Drugs are one trick ponies. They try to be, but unfortunately they're not really one trick ponies. They have many tricks, but all of the other tricks are bad tricks that cause side effects, they call them, right? Shouldn't be called side effects, they should be called effects. But the awesome thing about botanicals and nutraceuticals is that the side effects are beneficial, right? Like how many things I just mentioned ginger does? We want it for the primary use sometimes, right? I'm gonna use it for in, in our discussion today to bring down inflammation, but it does all those other really awesome things as well. Increasing circulation, how good is that for, for wound healing? The more blood, the more resources, the more immune cells, the more anti-inflammatory chemicals you can get to an area of injury, the quicker it's going to heal, which is why we use uh, temperature modalities too, uh, cold and hot. Ginger, love it, always have it on hand. We, we, we saw uh, licorice on there as well. This is just a tincture that I made a long time ago, which is why it has this really simple label. Uh, licorice helps to potentiate cortisol. Cortisol is something in our body that's a great anti-inflammatory, so much so that they'll inject people with it sometimes to really decrease inflammation. People will take it as a capsule to decrease inflammation. What does cortisol do? What does prednisone do? Why is it a good anti-inflammatory? The mechanism is that it suppresses the immune system. We're starting to understand the biochemistry here a little bit. It's an immunosuppressant. So as such, it brings down the inflammatory set point that was too high, right? It's used a lot in autoimmune diseases because in autoimmunity, the immune system so ramped up, it's so revved up that you're attacking your own body. It's like, rah, rah, rah. it's like, you know, when a wild animal, like I have a friend uh, recently who broke up a dog fight, right? There's these two dogs, they're fighting, it got aggressive and he broke up the dog fight. And in the process, his thumb got ripped open by one of the tooth of, teeth of the dog, right? That's sort of what autoimmunity is. It's kind of like, it's, it, it's so overactive that it doesn't really know what it's attacking and it ends up attacking your own tissue. So prednisone is an anti-inflammatory, suppresses the immune system, brings it down, right? That's how it works, just as a little side note. Okay, one more um, supplement and then two other things that I, ha I just had on my shelf because um, it's another really great one is quercetin. This is a form of quercetin called enzymatically modified isocursetrin. That's why it's called EMIC. Uh, it's activated quercetin. It's uh, more absorbable. It, um, uh, we talk about this also in my supplements class, the, the different forms of nutrients, what, what you want to look out for, what the best versions are. Because again, I mentioned at the beginning of our discussion today, people say all the time, supplements don't work for me. Oh, I tried that. Didn't do anything. Well, most of the time, I would say people are not using them properly or in the right dosage. And little secret, what's on the bottle is usually not enough. That's the big secret here. Not even close to enough to actually get the effect for what we're after in most situations. 
So those are the nutraceuticals. There's a couple other things I just had lying around, which I find are quite useful sometimes uh, for inflammation and injuries. Uh, one is topical magnesium. If like something's quite superficial, like you pull the muscle, the muscle's twitching, you're kind of injured, you have neck tension, things like that. Mag uh, a topical magnesium can be really helpful uh, to help relax the muscle. You can also do it as an Epsom salts bath, which is a wonderful tool for bringing down inflammation and just relaxing the mind. By the way, the mind and the stress response can increase inflammation, but that's a dis uh, discussion for another day. We talk about that in great detail in my mental health and neurology course. And then there are lots of topicals out there. This is just kind of a gel that I had kicking around, Arnica, Arnica gel. I don't know if it makes a huge difference. I've used it a lot on injuries just because I have it. I think I got it as a sample. Um, I can't tell you yet if it actually has a powerful anti-inflammatory effect. I do have a salve, which I, I don't have with me here, that has cayenne in it and some peppermint and some other things. But I find cayenne uh, can be really great anti-inflammatory and help with pain. It blocks something called substance P, which is responsible for pain. And in doing so, can be really great topically in some situations. Um, you know, if something's superficial, meaning close to the surface to help with pain. So you've got some amazing tools in your toolbox there, or maybe you wanna get them and add them to your toolbox. Uh, just in summary, you've got the fish oil, which helps decrease the inflammatory set point. You've got the specialized pro-resolving mediators, which are further down the pathway for decreasing inflammation and making those anti-inflammatory chemicals. You've got Wobenzyme, which is a combination of proteolytic enzymes, which help to decrease the debris and help with tissue healing and help bring down inflammation. You've got inflavonoid intensive care, which is a botanical combination, which really helps to bring down that inflammatory process. Ginger being one of the herbs in there. So we highlighted ginger as a single herb, also in tincture form for fast absorption and for easy transport. And for something that really never goes bad. Licorice root to help with potentiating cortisol. Um, you have to be careful with straight up licorice root a little bit because it can increase blood pressure. Uh, enzymatically modified isocrystrin are also known as quercetin which can help to really decrease inflammation and help with that. Um, actually, this works in concert with zinc. Zinc uh, and quercetin work together to get into the cell a lot more efficiently. And then a couple topicals like magnesium spray and arnica can be helpful for some people. And some people really enjoy using those types of things. So thank you so much for joining me for this discussion on how to tame inflammation with supplements. It's been my pleasure to have you all uh, take the time out of your busy day to learn the tools of the trade. If you want to learn more, join me through the functional nutrition certification program. Registration is open right now. And um, the first course is called therapeutic nutrition and supplements in practice. It is the kitchen sink of supplements. So we talk about these, we talk about way more, we go into great detail. Uh, we talk about every vitamin, every mineral, herbs, mushroom medicine, bee medicine. Anyway, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but you can check that out on my website. Also, there's another event coming up. I'm going to be interviewing my good friend, Gaytan, um, all about exercise, the myths and truths about exercise and training. I have so many questions for him. He, um, he's like, amazing when it comes to exercise and, 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 um, performance. Um, so that's going to be coming up on Tuesday next week. Um, and you'll get an email. If you are here with me now, you registered and you'll be getting that notice as well. So hopefully you can join me for that. That'll be really eye opening, I'm sure. Um, other than that, we have a masterclass happening right now. joshgitalis.com slash masterclass is a free five part masterclass where I get into some really cool topics like how to create lasting change, um, genetics and how we apply functional nutrition to that. Um, 
uh, da, 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 one of my greatest tools in functional nutrition and lots of other great information. You can check that out. So a lot of great ways to um, up your knowledge on functional nutrition. I hope you can join me for some of those. Uh, thank you all for your attention and for joining me here today to learn about these incredible tools. If you want to learn more, you can pop on to joshgitalis.com. That's where you can find all the information about me. And um, I really hope to see some of you in class and hopefully uh, sometimes, sometime in the near future. Take care and have a wonderful day.